passage of the compact agreement is critically important for the region because it says how important the Great Lakes are and really puts an emphasis on being one of the great assets of the world. The second thing is it's important to have regional water management requirements because that's the framework on how we work together to be good stewards of protecting the Great Lakes. It wasn't about politics. It wasn't about party partisanship. It wasn't about political philosophy. It was about regions, countries, states all coming together to say, we have a common interest in protecting the Great Lakes and doing the right thing for all of us today and in the future. The Great Lakes are big, powerful, 20% of the fresh water of the world is in these lakes. These are inland seas and they are critical to the long-term health of this region of the country. And the good news is the compact at least protects the water. Just legally, that water can't be taken. But it did another thing, which was create the process for states to develop together benchmarks and data and information that can be used for the improvement of the Great Lakes. The other thing in the compact I really should emphasize, it developed really good relationships between the Great Lakes states and the Canadian provinces. And that's a good thing and to the extent the compact helps a lot of efforts go, which Canada and the United States are working together on Great Lakes improvement. So the compact did a lot of good things. We just got to make sure the commitment continues. I think we feel confident in, in Ontario that we've achieved an agreement that is the kind of agreement we wanted, one that looks at protecting the waters of the Great Lakes. And that it's a benefit to us that the eight Great Lakes states, in fact, are united on that same agreement because the need for water and water resources are still there. You know, the Great Lakes, there will always be, I would assume, people who see, well, we have this vast supply of water there. Why, why can't we get at it or how do we get at it? But now, if people do try to do that, they now would be up against this uh, compact that the eight Great Lakes states have, which I think is a pretty strong barrier to being able to do anything that threatens the region. The Joyce Foundation first funded activity on the compact because our focus is on the quality of life in the Great Lakes region, and we can have a very long view on issues that may take a long time to resolve, but we think are of utmost importance to the people that we are most focused on. And we thought it was worth investing in the Great Lakes Governor's effort to provide a guide for how you protect a resource in a way that allows people from all ends of the political spectrum to come together. And it's a compact that's fairly comprehensive in terms of how the states and two provinces of Canada will use that power to protect the waters of the Great Lakes. And it was something that was a lot of hard work. <laughs> a lot of time consuming and a lot of my role was not to tell them what they had to do but to help create an environment where people would appreciate each other so that they respected each other enough to be able to work on the difficult issues without blowing the thing apart and if you kept them having to work at consensus it was a model of how states can come together and resolve some of these issues in working together to manage the Great Lakes. I got involved in the compact and the agreement as part of the advisory committee to help advise the, the parties that were negotiating the compact, called the working group, to build what we ultimately saw as one of the great goals, and that's durability. And one of the things that the working group challenged us is not just to say, I don't like this, but to challenge us to come in with new thoughts. And it's allowed the rest of the country to take a look back and say, wow, they meant what they said they were gonna do. They said they were gonna look at systems in place to manage 20% of the world's fresh water at scale. One of the simple phrases that we came to during the compact negotiations was water in its place has value. It matters to keep water here in the Great Lakes. The compact's not just a way to say no, but it's a way to drive our own thoughtfulness, our own care, and our own stewardship over this resource. And I think the Compact Council and the agreement managed through the Council of Great Lakes Governors does an exceptional job at that. The Great Lakes Compact and the agreement means that we can tackle a challenge that a lot of people didn't think we could. And I think it's created a spirit of optimism 
and courage to go forward and try to tackle other similarly large problems. It was a springboard to what's become the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, now something on the order of $2 billion in federal resources for protecting and restoring the Great Lakes. It's also, I think, created an environment where we've begun to work on how to encourage uh, using water more efficiently, reducing waste, but also enabling water to be used in reasonable ways. So striking that balance was a key challenge around a range of issues. Another key outcome of the compact for U.S.-Canada relations is the importance of demonstrating that this region was galvanized by the compact agreement process. This was truly bringing together an arrangement across the border, 10 equal parties working together. And I think that demonstration is very positive for the U.S.-Canadian relationship. The Great Lakes have really shaped Ontario's way of life. They've shaped the economic opportunities that we create and that we have access to. They've defined our sense of natural heritage and the duty that we have to preserve that heritage for future generations. So it's in this way that the Great Lakes give us a, a regional identity that transcends all borders, enhances the benefits of our long-standing friendship with our American neighbors. And the Great Lakes Agreement and Compact builds on 200 years of collaboration and cooperation in order to make the whole region healthier and stronger and more prosperous. And we understand that with the benefits that we derive from our heritage as Great Lakes people, comes a responsibility to keep the basin's ecosystem healthy so that it can benefit future generations. We really very much appreciate the Council of Great Lake Governors leadership on the implementation of both agreements. Ontario looks forward to continuing to work with its provincial and its state partners to implement our agreement.